Welcome back everyone. I'm Zell and I got something I want to show you today. Two tricks in Fusion 360 that will make your life a thousand percent easier if you don't already know them. So I've been messing around in Fusion 360 for about three years and I didn't know both of these tricks. I knew one of them uh, for quite a while. The other one I didn't know till just recently. And uh, let me show you. I pulled up this valet tray that uh, that Todd, one of the Todd Knife and Tool guys, one of us designed it a while back. And I was thought, well, that one was actually pretty cool. I'm going to print that one. I'm going to check it out and see if there's anything else I can do with it, you know, embellish it or whatever. And try to use it for a while and see if it's a good one. And then... I was uh, doing some measuring around, and I did an inspect, and I realized that whenever we drew this one, it was drawn in the Imperial system. Some of you are thinking, who cares? The system's a system, it's all just a way to measure things, and you're right. However, whenever you're trying to output this stuff to a 3D printer, or m many other CNC devices uh, in this day and time, they all want metric. And I'm not saying they can't take imperial units, but some of them do conversions of u imperial units, and the conversions are not always great. Uh, others just choke on them, and uh, there are some out there that are designed for imperial units. But the 3D printers are definitely not designed for Imperial units. And that's the device that we were trying to get this to. So I was like, all right, so what the heck do I do? I knew there had to be an easier way. And I've been banging my head against the wall about this for, I don't know, a year and a half. And I'm clicking around on things. Well, I was actually watching, uh, oh, what's that, uh, Ink Master. And I'm clicking around on stuff, and I'm like, oh, what's this? Document settings, units, inches? Ah, change active units. So I clicked on that little thing that looks like a pen and a piece of paper, and I get unit type over here, and then I could select my unit types, and my first thought was, ain't no way that's going to work. Not the way I think it should work anyhow, because in my mind, it should just completely change everything over to whatever the other units are. And I thought, yeah, I've never had any luck with this. It's going to goof it up. Then I hit the OK button. First thing happened was nothing really changed with the drawing. So what I did was I did an inspect, and I did a very specific inspect, and I saw that I was for sure now in millimeters. And I was like, woohoo, maybe still suspect of the whole thing, I went and did a bunch of conversions, did a, took a bunch of measurements, did a bunch of conversions between metric and uh, imperial, and yeah, it, it transferred them straight over. So I have no fear anymore. I could go over here and do this, and, and we'll just do it for fun. I could change this to uh, meters. And I click OK. We'll do our measurement. Pick a couple of things, and we're 0 0.134 meters. No fear. I, I, I'll change this thing to any one of those units or an output file. So, we're going to leave it in millimeters because that's what we need to print this thing with. And so, we should talk about what is cool about this. If you're not really thinking about it, you're just trying to learn CAD, and you're like, hey, hey check this video out. That sounds interesting. Uh, hopefully you did that anyhow. And here's what's powerful about that. If you work in Imperial units, if that's what you know and love, this means you can work in Imperial units and send your output file in metric. If you are a person who knows and loves a metric system, you can do your file in the metric system you can swap the output units. At, whenever you're all done with the file, just go up there and swap the active units and output that file in the Imperial units. 
Now, is this the best way to do things? Uh, not really, but it's a lot better than sending an Imperial file to somebody in Asia or sending a metric file to somebody in the United States because uh, many of your designers for various things do not work in the metric system. Uh, some do, some don't, but many don't, and uh, especially here in the United States. And whenever you send them a metric file, then they have to go start diddling around trying to figure out what millimeters or centimeters come up to and if you're using fusion 360 this will make your life a lot easier now that is one we got two though tricks for fusion 360 whenever it comes to units uh and here's the other one we need to make a new drawing here uh, and we'll that does not look right we'll grab that because, oh, actually, that was the right one. We want to do it on here. And not a circle. We want a rectangle. Let's see. Let's actually see what units we're working in. We're working in inches. Good. You see what I did there? I had a circle, so all I did was stretch the circle out, and I looked in the little lit-up box. It says 6.73 inches. Now, check this out. We can just do this right here. Maybe I want that to be 25.6 millimeters. That's 1.008 inches. Did you see what I did there? All right, we'll do it in a little easier to see way. Check this out. Center point rectangle. We are working currently in inches. And we want to do a 10 by 7 box. But 10 by 7, what is that in millimeters? Well, we could just do our 10 by 7 box. And then if we want to see what it is in millimeters, we go over here. We change our active units to uh, millimeters. And there we go. Now we know what it is in millimeters. That's pretty cool, but... It can get better than this. Let's uh, get rid of that. We'll put ourselves back in metric here, or in millimeters. What if you are that guy that works in imperial units, and you need to have an output file that is in the metric system, and it's stressing you out? All right, so do this. We know that's the long side, and it was... 10 inches, right? We'll put a 10 in there and then I in after it. And you shouldn't hit enter, you should hit tab if you're going to do the other side of the box. But uh, we'll do it again just because I was silly and hit the wrong buttons. We'll go 10, I in, hit tab. And then we'll do 7, I in. We can hit tab again. And what happens when we do hit the last one? We're 177.8 and 254 millimeters. So what is cool about this? You can, of course, go both ways with this or any uh, units that the that Fusion recognizes, which feet, meters, uh, millimeters, and centimeters, I think is what we had in that list. And at any point, like we want to change this, we can do 21 IN. And I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. Yep. There you go. And we could go the other way. We change our units to inches. And we could go 177.8 mm. And we're right back where we started. And what makes this powerful is you can start a drawing in whatever units you want for the active drawing. And then, if you have a hard measurement in a different system, like me, I've got a tape measure that measures in inches. I do not have a tape measure. I don't have anything longer than uh, whatever this thing is, 45, 46 centimeters that measures 
in centimeters. So if I need to do a long measurements measurement, I have to use inches. And I can do it in inches, and I can put it into a metric drawing. Same thing uh, if you're doing a drawing in inches, but somebody sent you some stuff in millimeters or centimeters, you can put them in there and be sure to put either the IN, the CM, or the MM after them, and it will convert it directly to whatever your active units are. And that, friends, is ridiculously powerful and useful, especially for us over here in the Imperial system where it can be hard to get metric measuring equipment. Uh, I need to get a metric tape measure that's more than, you know, like a 12 or 15 foot tape measure. Yeah, 12 or 15 feet. Yeah, see, there you go. 12 or 15 meter tape measure. And uh, they're a bit expensive to get here in the United States. So having that conversion factor makes it easier. It also makes it where I can pick up any tape measure I've got laying around down here in the bunker or out in the shop. And no problem. Just do the transfer. Works with decimals. Works with whatever you stick in there. And guys, it is just super powerful what Fusion 360 allows you to do. There's a lot of stuff I wish was easier to hunt down and find out in Fusion 360, but as I learn it, uh, it just makes things so much better. It's just sometimes frustrating how hard it can be to learn this stuff. Because I don't have any formal training. I don't have any place around me to get formal training on this. And I've asked questions, but I really hate just bothering people constantly with questions. Even though there have been several people that have offered to assist me that are much better at this than I am. But anyhow, guys, those are your two tips for Fusion 360 for the day about measurement units. And if you didn't know these already, I hope that this helped you immensely. I know it did because this is one of my biggest frustrations in all my time using Fusion 360 is one, me getting metric and imperial straight in my head and how they relate to each other. And secondly, getting those output files in the metric system or dealing with files that come to me in the imperial system and getting them to where I can output them in the metric system. It's, oh, it's a big mess, friends and neighbors. And I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you learned something and have a great day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. We've got more, hopefully more fun stuff coming up, not just all this super informative stuff. Hopefully more fun stuff coming your way. In fact, I know we will. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you next time.